Hello there everyone, my name for these videos is D.B. James and today I'm going to talk to you about a topic which is very close to my heart which is how to speak fast, fluently and naturally. You know I've been teaching for many years and over the years I've had so many students coming up to me and telling me after all those years of studying English I'm still not able to speak English fast, fluently and naturally. Why is that? It's for a very simple reason that I'm going to explain to you in a minute. So let's dive right into it. The main reason why people cannot speak English fast, fluently and naturally despite having studied the language for many many years is because they are thinking in their native language and translating directly into English. To avoid doing that you have to think directly in English and not translate words or concepts from your native language into English. But having said that, there is a particular way to do it because it sounds fun in theory but maybe in practice it doesn't work for you. Um, you need some help to do that. And um, the first thing I need to notice is that translation does not really work for a number of reasons. First of all, you need to know both structures and words. And secondly, words do not mean the same thing in different languages. And actually, if you put words together, most likely you're going to mess up. Because that's not how people express themselves. They express themselves by using whole phrases, not individual words. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I'm a native speaker of Spanish and I'm traveling in the United States by train. Uh, I meet somebody on the train, I start a conversation with them, and I want to know what kind of work they do. So if I think in Spanish and translate my thoughts into English, I'll probably think in Spanish, uh, Quiero saber qué trabajo hace esa señora. So I will translate into English and I will say, What work you do? Well, that's a, a grammatical mistake because we actually say, What work do you do? But even if I know the structure and I ask the question the right way, it's correct, but it's still not the most natural thing to say in those circumstances. It's not the most common thing to say. You don't sound like a native speaker. Because most likely, if the other person was an American, a native speaker of English, after they've met that stranger on the train, the way they would ask that question would be different. They would probably ask her, what do you do for a living? Because that's the most natural phrase to use to ask somebody what work they do in English. So, to learn to speak English fast, fluently and naturally, you need to learn to perform certain functions in English. You need to learn the language you need, the phrases you need, to introduce yourself to others, to ask for directions, to book a room in a hotel, those kinds of things. Okay, so how can you do that? Let me explain it to you. First of all, the first thing you need to do is stop learning individual words. You heard me right, yes. Stop learning words. Instead of learning words, you should be learning whole phrases. That's right, the whole phrase, not the individual words. Because if you keep thinking in individual words, that's a surefire recipe for disaster. So, um, I'm going to help you to do that. Um, we're going to be using five categories of phrases. We're going to start with the three most basic ones and then move on to the two extra ones. So, the most basic categories of phrases are adjective plus noun phrases, verb plus adverb phrases, and verb plus noun phrases. Let's look at each one of these categories in more detail. We're going to start with adjective plus noun phrases. Those are the most basic ones to use. So, uh, when you are first learning the language, you should learn certain set phrases, such as the ones that you see on the board right here. So, I'm going to go over them with you right now. You should learn phrases such as a small family, a large house, a busy day, a big change, a long video, a fun thing to do, a new experience, a nice old lady, a cute little dog, a brave soldier, a bright light, dirty hands, short answers, the next stop, the right attitude. So now I'd like you to say these things after me once again. A small family, a large house, a busy day, a big change, a long video, 
a fun thing to do, a new experience. A nice old lady, a cute little dog, a brave soldier, a bright light, dirty hands, short answers, the next stop, the right attitude. Okay, so let's apply what we've learned. Let's say now that you are sitting comfortably at home watching television, and whilst you are watching a program on television, you make comments. So you see things on television, then you say to yourself out loud, or maybe in your head, it doesn't matter which one, Ooh, that's a cute little dog. Ooh, that's a large house. Ooh, that's a nice old lady. So if you keep making those comments as you watch the program, most likely, after a while, these phrases are going to stick in your mind and you will remember them forever. And instead of thinking in individual words, next time you will think of the whole phrase that you used before. Try this for a week and you will notice the difference. You will see astonishing results in just one week. Okay, now let me move on to the second type of phrase. which is verb plus adverb. Okay. It's very important to learn these phrases as a whole because what happens is these verbs can be used with different adverbs, not just these ones that you see on the board, but they are most commonly used with those particular adverbs. So uh, it helps remember them that way. Let's go over this list. Act quickly. Drive safely. Ask politely. Sit comfortably. Dance elegantly, speak fluently, arrive at work punctually, dress casually, behave foolishly, sleep badly, talk rudely, dance clumsily, play well, study hard. Okay. So uh, next time you watch the video, you can say these phrases out loud on your own. Now, uh, here's another exercise to try to remember these phrases as a whole and not as individual separate words. Um, ask yourself these questions. To become a better person, what should I be doing? How should I act? And then answer, I should act quickly. How should I drive? I should drive safely. How should I ask people questions? I should ask them politely. How should I be sitting? I should be sitting comfortably. How should I be dancing? I should be dancing elegantly. How should I be speaking? I should be speaking fluently. Right. Uh, and then for the negative ones, the negative phrases, ask yourself the opposite question. What should I avoid? What I, I shouldn't be doing? And then you can answer by saying, well, I shouldn't always dress casually because sometimes you have to dress formally. It depends on the situation. I shouldn't behave foolishly. I shouldn't sleep badly. I shouldn't talk rudely. I shouldn't dance clumsily. Maybe I should take some dancing lessons. So you get the idea. Okay, you try to associate these verbs uh, with those particular adverbs. Now, uh, this is a two part video series, and we come to the end of the first part. Um, I'm, you're going to see the next video next week, so watch out for it. And next week, I'm also going to teach you the technique that you need in order to learn to think directly in English without your native language interfering anywhere in the process. So uh, the next video is going to be terribly important. I hope you found this video useful. So bye bye for now. What's the next video?